wanted to ask you about uh, how has the band been doing during this pandemic time because I have seen flyers of your concerts around the city and I'm guessing a lot of things got cancelled for you too. Yeah, let's say 99% of the live business got cancelled. So if you if you say that an online stream is still a live concert, then it's 99%, otherwise it's going to be 100 But I really must say, as much as I love the streams, it's, it's not the same thing, you know. And um, we're doing quite well. I mean, you know, we, we really don't want to complain. First of all, because I'm sitting here uh, being interviewed by some Finnish online magazine, which makes me already um, a privileged person, you know. On the rest of the planet, people are dying, kids are starving, so many bad th things are happening. I really don't want to complain. But of course, if I allow myself to uh, complain just w within this little box of just ourselves, of course, the whole pandemic thing was like devastating for us in many different ways. But um, we seem to have the best fans in the world that really, really supported us by buying like tons of merch. And also we've been very creative in different kinds of merch. We did things that we never thought of that we, we, we'd be doing and people loved it. So um, thanks to everyone out there. So we're doing quite well, but of course we cannot wait because selling merch and doing online streams is, is not a replacement for if you choose to be a musician. <laughs> How much does this quieter time has to do with the fact that you are actually in the beginning of next month releasing a double album with a whopping 24 songs? A lot. <laughs> uh, when we planned to do a new record, uh, we already planned this before the pandemic. We knew that we're gonna hit uh, a studio for songwriting in mid of 2020. But we thought about like a normal album, like 12 songs, and then maybe you just produce some bonus tracks and you know, the way it works and you have some stuff left and you use it for like whatever. And then the whole pandemic really started to hit us in March, April last year. We just came from an, a European tour, which also, uh, yeah, led us to Finland. I think last time we played there was January 2020 in Seinejoki and... Um, was it Helsinki? I don't remember. And um, then we were like, okay, fuck, we have much, much more time. So let's just use it. There was no excuse not to use it, you know, because we were like, okay, one day this whole thing is going to be opening up again. And then we might have zero time to create a new record for like two years, maybe. So let's do something big now. On the other hand, it was the seventh album. So we wanted to create something big. And then I have to go back to Finland because we actually planned to do a one week or 10 day songwriting camp in the very north of Finland in June 2020 in the months like when it's not getting dark and was like in the very north where you have like the midnight sun and stuff because we find it very inspiring. There's like a studio um, which I heard of from my friend Jani from Mercury Circle. It's called Drum Forest. It's up in the very north and it's it's a little studio by the lake and we wanted to go there with the band and our crew and write songs for 10 days. And of course the pandemic stopped us <laughs> again. So we did the songwriting here also in this room. So this songwriting camp in Finland is the first thing we're gonna do when we are up to the next record and have to write songs for it. Yeah, the upcoming uh, album is, of course, called Judas. And uh, how did the character of Judas kind of become the centerpiece of this double album? Um, actually, very funny story. I listened to um, the second Lady Gaga album many years ago. I think it was 2014. And there's a song on it called Judas. And I just love the word a lot. When you're a musician, you sometimes just need to hear a word to be inspired. You're like, oh, wow, that's a strong word. And and, and the whole uh, picture opens up here. But uh, then nothing happened for many years. And like a couple years ago, I stumbled over some documentaries about the role of Judas in the whole biblical uh, history. <laughs> 
And um, I also stumbled upon this um, so-called the Gospel of Judas, which is an apocryphal script, which is forbidden by the Catholic Church, which is like a gospel which was found, but they, the church says it, it's, it's not real, it's not true, however. But it, it sheds a different kind of light on the Judas story. And then we started researching, me and the whole band, because everyone involved was like super inspired and interested. And then we were discussing about the character of Judas and his role in the whole thing. And there's so much more to him than just being a traitor or a bad person. He's much more a scapegoat or even a savior because without him none of this has happened. If you believe that's history just for a moment, you know. And um, so we were like, Judas is some kind of ancient biblical Batman that like, you know how how Gotham needs Batman sometimes as a scapegoat? That's Judas in the Bible. And we were like, this is fucking inspiring. And then we came up with that logo, which looks like an inverted cross and a J at the same time. So on the first view, you see something which is considered to be evil, the inverted cross, and then you see it's a J, you know, don't judge a book by its cover and so forth. And yeah, the rest is history. Okay, and uh, what about the recording of this album? We have been talking about things getting cancelled and I understand that there is an actual choir singing in the background. So how did you manage the recording of the double album? Yes, we had to rearrange like many things. We didn't only want to write the record in Finland, we also said we want this album to be um, recorded at all our favorite places. So we were like, we were looking like for cool studios and we said, let's go on a record drums in Mexico City. Let's go on a record guitars in St. Petersburg. Let's go on a, you know, the, the whole thing. Let's go on a uh, record vocals on the island of Malta. So we couldn't do all of these things. And um, so we had to realize it differently. Also for the choir, but this is something we planned differently in the very beginning because for two reasons we cannot work with a hundred piece choir first is money you know if you have like a real hundred piece church choir and you have to pay all these people for rehearsing and recording it's so much fucking money i mean we, we put everything we have in this record also money wise but this would have just been too much so we were gathering like five close friends of us, singers from other bands, which can like sing very, very well uh, with a big scale from low to high. So each of these singers could like work with like at least three different voices. And we recorded them piece by piece in the studio, singer by singer, and then kind of stacked up this choir like, like Lego stones, you know, in like one week or something. And that way, of course, it's also studio work and people being paid and a lot of money, but much less than a hundred, uh, uh, hundred piece choir. And the second reason is like, we wanted to work with people we actually know, which are actually close to us. And if I give just sheet of music to like 100 people in the choir, it felt kind of, kind of weird. We wanted to have the personal aspect and the human voice on that record, also for the choir. Yeah, uh, well, things are very hard to kind of see how it's going to be in the next one or two months. But uh, do you have any idea at the moment uh, when the next tour could be happening? Because, of course, things are now looking better, but who knows? Um, I have an idea when it could be happening, but I already had many ideas of other tours when they could have hap could have been happening because things got postponed and then re 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 postponed post post postponed all again all time uh, all the time so to be honest i really stopped thinking about it because at first something gets cancelled or postponed and then you're like oh damn then you're sad and then your booking agent tells you, hey, it's going to be then. And then you're like, oh, there's and there's this light at the end of the tunnel. And then you're super happy. And then it gets postponed again. And so you're going back and forth. So I just decided that I will stop to look forward to things. So even if my agent then calls me and says, hey, 
the, we have this thing and this thing next year and this festival asks like things I have dre dreamt of since I'm a little child. I'm not like yeah anymore. I'm like okay. Not because I'm an arrogant motherfucker. It's just because I'm like I don't want to be so disappointed. So I just say okay. Let's wait it out. <laughs> and when I'm actually there, like on sound check, and I know it's happening, then I can start to be happy, you know. Yeah, I think that's just natural. I, I think it happened to me too naturally. I'm just not like looking forward to things anymore because I'm kind of sure that they won't happen in the end, or that's kind of the underlying feeling to everything at the moment. Yes, and it's it's, it's kind of sad in a way. It sounds really sad, but it it really kind of helps me to to keep my head up, you know, to somehow keep my head over water because it's like, um, if you do what you love so much, and if you if you put all everything you had in this job, like, and if you fight to be a musician all your life, and then this happens, and you end up like being disappointed like every couple of days again about the same thing. You need to find a workaround, and I think my workaround is just like going on standby mode until things are being fine again. <laughs>